excellent <laughs> good evening everybody and good morning and good day depending on where you are in the world and happy new year to all may the fourth happy new year 2019 going to be a bit of a roller coaster by all accounts so um we thought we'd start we go. with a, i know <laughs> strap in hold tight it's going to be a hell right. of a ride that seems to be the astrological report um, summary. So I'm going to start, if I may, with my 3D glasses. Boo, boo's of the theme. And the first Can I say something really quick? I'm sorry to interrupt you. My yeah. friend's joining. Alicia! Yay! Alicia! <laughs> I didn't know if you could make it. Hi, Alicia. Hi, hello. Welcome. How lovely to hear you. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you hear us all right? It's all good. Oh, excellent. Yes. Oh, that's so lovely. Well, Happy New Year to you, Alicia. It's lovely for you to join us. We're Thank starting, you. Thanks for having me. We're starting with an oracle card reading from a deck called Work Your Light by Rebecca Campbell. I love that deck. I love that. We all love this deck. And the one I picked for all of us just before we came on was Answer the Call. What is your soul calling you to do? And I thought, well, that's timely for the new year. Your guidance is divinely guided. You are being called to answer the call of your soul. It might be scary, it might not make sense, but if you trust your soul's yearnings, you will live a life beyond what your mind could possibly imagine. Answering your soul's calling is not a one-time thing, rather a lifelong dance. Deep down, you already know what you long for, what your soul yearns for. Whatever you are called to do, that is your calling. Don't overthink it, don't wait for permission, just say yes. Most people are waiting for a step-by-step -step plan before they take the first step. But intuition doesn't work like that. It takes faith and courage to answer the calls of your soul. And that's why most people don't do it. But you are not most people. Huzzah! <laughs> you, are exactly, you are in exactly the right place to answer your calling now. You don't need to know the whole plan. That's good. You don't even know to need to know where it is leading. You just need to take the next step. No one has ever had the complete perfect plan. There is, there is no end destination and there is no right or wrong way to do it and you do not need permission from anyone else to start it. Sometimes the more resistance we have around answering a soul calling, the more important it is to our soul's growth. Mm. What is your soul calling you to do? Mm -hmm. ah. Wow, Claire, that is on point That's for me nice. right now. I know. Resonate. I think it's perfect, perfect for the new year. Strike it a chord. Does anybody have an idea what their soul's calling is for this year? Has anybody had any insights or, or a, this strong calling that they've avoided, resisted, but now they're embracing? Any thoughts? Uh, Sorry, being myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, right what there. Right? That's it. Be yourself. Being, That's really it. being myself. That's... Yeah. That is actually it. Just being myself. Not Stepping into my power. Yeah, there you go. You know, yeah. like like our real selves, like all right. like, what we are. Yeah. Not this little like, oh, yeah. I don't know what I am and what am I supposed to do? And not needing that permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not well, needing, well, you know, like the card said. Yeah. 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 Just go for it. Alicia, any idea on the detail? Are you going to just be you or you've got more to do? Um, oh boy. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to do. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to embrace all of me and like, uh, integrate it into the business that we already have. So that's going to be very exciting. We're going to like kind of merge the historical with the Temple Beautiful. Oh my God. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's on the, that's on the docket for, oh for this year. And oh then, my God. I want to like shoot confetti off right now. <laughs> I really do because I understand. No, I can see you shooting confetti off. <laughs> yes, I understand. Alicia, we need to talk a little bit more about this because we're, we've spent, we've all been like separating our, our, you know, who we really are from who society wants us to be. So what you just said means yeah. you're merging them. Oh man. And that's, that is no easy feat either. Yeah, I, I know. It seems when, when you're like, oh, I'm just going to merge these two sides of me. It seems really simple. But um, it, it's so complicated, especially like in the historical community where everybody wants, um, and like all my degrees are like history, anthropology, archaeology, all that stuff. So everybody wants it on paper or they want the specific artifact or they want the specific recipe to, to say, well, if we don't have it in front of us, it's not legit. Where I'm like, 
pulling recipes and stuff, you know, from my team, historical recipes from my team and like just, so it's going to be a wonderfully crazy adventure and I'm looking forward to it. That sounds I'm so glad. Amazing. Can you, can, Alicia, could you like explain just very briefly what it is you do? Because these lovely ladies have not even, uh, they didn't even know you were coming today. No, I didn't. Like, so this is a big oh, surprise. Oh my God. So, could you like just say a little bit about yourself? Because yeah. you are fascinating. Sure. Um, well, um, I, I, it's, I don't know really where to start. I, I was, uh, I was born on a ship. <laughs> I was born on a ship. Um, um, so my, my experience of, of, of hum being human in the world is a very interesting experience. Um, I have a, I started a business where we, we look into forgotten history, forgotten recipes that are truly organic um, and that can heal and we brought those back. And so not only are we, like, like we have like, like an anxiety bomb or like a migraine bomb or like salves. We have 1920s lipsticks. So like we do the whole historical cosmetic thing too. But um, the one thing I'm really passionate about is putting light codes and like light, light activations into these recipes, into these potions, into the whatever they are. So not only are we healing people on the outside, but we're also helping them with their missions and their light work and all that fun stuff that, you know, they're on their own paths for. Wow. So wow. superpowers. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like channeling ancient Egyptian recipes for like Ooh, all sorts of I just got goosebumps. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> Alicia, it. you're you're incredible. So I'm really excited to hear that you're doing Thank that. You. That's right. Thank you. So, little, 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 little. Oh my, God. <laughs> my Egyptian coal pot came like my, I won, I won an auction because one of my things is like collecting artifacts and um, collecting relics. And I just had an ancient Egyptian eyeliner pot come from something. So I'm translating those hieroglyphics. Very excited. <laughs> That was meant to be. You didn't just. You didn't just win it. You were. That was meant to go to you. Yeah. I have a but. I have a. I have a, some personal connections on the other side that um, that help me with these mm -hmm. with these things. So totally. And you're, and you're in communication. You're open to being in communication with higher dimensional friends and. You know, oh, totally. Much, totally. I yes. I have some. I have some very interesting higher dimensional friends. Um, I don't know. Do we, do we do we give names? I I don't care. You can you can say anything. Yeah, this is them. like <laughs> you just hanging out. We're just hanging out. You okay. know. You some names. Uh, so some of my higher dimensional friends. I have two really close ones. One of them is Michael Jackson, and the other one is Ramses the Second. And so we chit chat. I chit chat more with Michael than I do with Ramses. Ramses is more there as a teacher where Michael's like, I love hanging out with you, but I actually have to go work, but I'll be back type of friend. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a question about Michael. Yes. Does, is he actually from a, like an actual planet like that's more music based? Um, like his, his core essence? Yeah. Uh, his, no, no, his core essence was not like born on a planet. His core, his core essence was born as a creator being gotcha okay because i'm always curious about like michael and like billy idol and because i'm always curious I'm like where do they come from they got to come from like something that's similar maybe but, it's a similar essence maybe it's you know I mean, music has always been there for him right. too so yeah yeah totally awesome. love it we had this adorable conversation about how um like i don't know how much you guys are familiar with his stuff although i think a lot of people are the uh, remember the time video because I was like I was like so explain this to me because um I you know like with with my Egyptian connections and I was like what's your Egyptian connection he's like well let me tell you he's like I had this dream where I thought I was King Tut like when I was alive so then like I I was like really really thinking I was King Tut so I really wanted to experience Egyptian Egypt as I saw it but then when I got on the other side I realized I wasn't King Tut it was, he's just so funny like <laughs> So he was not King Tut, but um, he was reliving some of his Egyptian experiences. <laughs> Let, can, can we go into depth on this a little bit? Because I think a lot of people have these flashes of 
experiences in other lifetimes that um, they may be connected to them in some sort of way, but it might not specifically be only theirs. Like this is, I think, happening a lot on the planet right now. Yeah, like people are coming out and saying like, like I was Edgar Casey in the past life. I was Cleopatra. I was this and that. And they're and they're like, that was me. And so I'm important. Look at how important I am. And um, you know, uh, it's it's all the ego stuff. So w- what what would be? How would you explain that, Alicia? Like a little bit in, more in depth, just for the people like me who the mind really starts to go and it's like, wait, so how does this all tie? To, what what's really going on here? So it there. What I understand is that there are we have, you know, the higher self. Oh God, mm-hmm. I don't want to get too. <laughs> I don't want to confuse myself here. The higher self which is essentially source, but it's like a, a subset. Let's say a subset of the, the light, the all, right? And then all these fragments of that higher self go off and experience things in all different ways, right? So yep. in, that, in that case, was he remembering an actual past life of his own specific soul? Or it sounds like no, because he said that wasn't me. He was. So, so um, what happens is that like our 3D lives sometimes get clouded. Our, when, when we look back at our specific um, timelines that we've had experiences in, um, and we're looking at them from a human perspective, the human perspective only knows specific things, let's just say, about Egypt. Like, okay, so Carter found King Tut's tomb, right? Like, um, you know, Ramses has a lot of like big statues of him like he he was a pretty important guy like basic things like that and so uh what happens is that we kind of get our timelines crossed a lot of times especially those who can jump timelines like i i am very good at jumping timelines and it happens like we get the information crossed a bit so uh what he was experiencing was a life where he was Tezarepta, who, uh, from what he told me, was a um, an Egyptian queen. And so he may have been um, seeing it as a child, you know, like, because King Tut was like, they say that King Tut was like a young boy. Um, and just kind of got things crossed, because we don't know anything about Tezarepta. I mean, he told me that Tezarepta actually ended up being a, a queen, um, but she got sick and she died shortly after. Uh, and, and he's had more than one Egyptian. He was very prominent in the Egyptian um, timelines. And so you have all these timelines there and you're jumping and sometimes they get kind of mixed up. Like that happened to me with trying to figure out um, some of my specific Egyptian incarnations where when I was little and I was having these dreams and I thought they were just dreams at that point, you know, and then I had this experience in this museum and I was like, whoa. Maybe these really aren't dreams. To try and like pick out what timeline you're actually jumping to is confusing. And so a lot of us go for the most, um, um, the most prominent thing that we know of in our lives, which a lot of, for a lot of people, it's King Tut, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it, it's very, very fascinating. And like, and I, I even asked him, cause there's like a statue somewhere uh, that kind of looks like how he looked in, in or one of his looks in uh, this experience, Egyptian statues. And I said, well, what does that have to do with like you and Egypt? And like, because it kind of resembles you. He's like, nothing. He's like, nothing. And I said, but what if that was like Tazareptet and nobody knows that? And he's like, oh, now that's something to think about. So like we even exchange ideas while he's, you know, on the other side, chilling out and... <laughs> And, like, he would have access to that information, I'm sure, if he needed it. But it's just kind of fun to, like, talk as he- humans mm-hmm. talk, you know, and not have to know everything so we can question and we can think about it. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun here, right? This is an adventure. Exactly. When we know everything, what, how is well, that fun? I love it because when you think you know something and then something else comes along, you're like, oh, wait. Well, that was yeah. only a piece of the puzzle. Not yes. to add to it. Yeah. And I think that's a summary of the human experience. We right. think we know. And then we're like, oh, well. <laughs> Oh, all right. Right. And then, you know, there's, there's, there's these wonderful beings like Akhenaten. Akhenaten is one of them who, for the collective, is sharing his experiences. So you have all these people who have memories of being Akhenaten. And it's not that 
they experienced that incarnation as Akhenaten. It's Akhenaten um, uh, agreed to send his memories to the collective so they could use those memories in their path to like get them to the next point if they choose to see it that way. But I think a lot of people get stuck then, right? Because then they're like, oh, I have these memories as this person or I have snippets. A lot of times it's snippets, so I must be that person. But it's very confusing once you like hash it all out. And so just, just like using them for what they are, wonderful experiences that you have memories of to get you to the next point, I think is the best. Right. Or to learn from. I mean, a lot of times I think you get a lot of those messages and be like, all right, well, what did you feel from that? Or what did you learn from that? Or it was, I, I do a lot of past life regressions myself. So that's why I'm always like, even if somebody was to bring out like, you know, Cleopatra is another one that's big, oh, like, yeah, totally. you know, and it's, and I'm always like, well, that's, that's really common, but well, how does that feel to you? You know, but they don't, they know some of the history, but then I'm like, all right, so d what does it feel like to be that person at that time? Maybe you need yeah. that to evolve to what you need now, you know? So, exactly. yeah, I love exactly. all that. So, so you've had multiple... Can I just say, because this, this feels so timely and synchronicitous that I'm, I'm just in, almost in shock. So <laughs> for years, I've always done healing on my little doggies. I've only got the one now, but I've always done night-night healings with them. And I just have this routine I go through, the words that I say, the deities that I call upon and for absolutely no reason, because I haven't read up much about ancient Egyptian um, history as we would know it as humans, but I, I've always said Nefertiti, Akhenaten, Akhenaten, Akhenaten. And I have such fondness and I have no idea, I, I had no idea why I'd settled on that name because I also say Seti and I also say Ramses and Tutankhamun, but I only say Tutankhamun because I think it's appropriate because it's Nefertiti's son and I don't want to leave him out and piss him off. But actually my, my yearning, my, I just feel full of love when I say mm -hmm. Akhenaten and so much that I have to say it three times. And I read somewhere that actually he was a bit of a bastard of a king. He was a real, you know, quite a hard nut. And I thought, I don't feel that. I just feel this extraordinary love when I say his name in a ritualistic sort of honoring way. And so I think, Alicia, thank you so much. You've just put that totally in perspective because <laughs> the love I felt, I thought I'd had an experience as Nefertiti. Um, but it, I knew that wasn't quite right. That was a sort of a, a slightly human rationalization of it. You know, I was adoring him. So therefore I must have been- She's another friend. one who has given her memories to the collective. Yeah, but I think it was, I'm, what I'm feeling is Akhenaten. So very, it's so beautiful. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> what you're feeling makes me want to cry like tears of joy. Well, there's more to it too. Um, so uh, a lot of us here in this incarnation, in this now, Michael always says, Michael always says, um, the now is now. So like he differentiates like this now from like a moment later now. Yeah. And that's really helped me when I'm, when I try to unravel this all for everybody, like how everything like works. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, so a lot of us are in that so collective, uh, that the Akhenaten, the Mary Magdalene, um, the Yeshua, like that is all one big soul collective. And so a lot of us, um, powerful light shedding warriors are from that collective. And so we've had experiences in that life with those, um, with those beings, or, um, we share the same mission, which, so when, when Akhenaten came in, um, uh, he, like, he, he is, he, he tried to come back in and, and just like we're doing now, right? Like get everybody sort of back on the path of like light and like, um, all these other beings who are wonderful deities, but really they're just, they're beings, they're, they're, they're galactic beings who came here and then everybody's like, oh, like, we're going to put you on a pedestal type of thing, right? So he wanted to get his back to the, right. <laughs> to, to, to the one and the all and the whole, the whole real concept of like light. And a lot of people, it was pretty shocking for a lot of people, but for like, for like us who are in that soul collective, we understand it from a deeper perspective. And I think that's part of what you're feeling is this love um, and appreciation for being, for him being in that position. Cause, mm -hmm. cause not only was he like not human, <laughs> right. Um, he, 
he really put himself out there and it didn't necessarily end well, but it, it showed us um, a, a bit of what was lost, what was forgotten and what we're, we're going to. And like Ramsey's put it best one day, he said, uh, he said, well, when, when we came in, cause, cause uh, Ramsey's was after, was, was after King Todd or like after Akhenaten, he goes, we so like he's like well when we came in when we came in we uh, we realized what didn't work from the past and so um, we changed the way that our heads we we changed the way how our heads looked so the population would take us a bit more seriously and we would blend in a bit better so like anyway this is it's this whole progression isn't that the thing about these days when it's all about accessibility. That I think we we're doing this work not just us four but you know all of the light beings the light warriors everywhere it's about making this ancient wisdom the ancient skills the the higher vibrational activities I feel it's about making it accessible by accessible being again. with it if it's too exactly. rarefied if it's too deified if it's too remote because it's it's so beyond our our sensibilities then we're not going to be able to draw that energy down in a conscious way and, and use it consciously so i i feel the more accessible this energy is the easier it is for us down here to do something with it mm -hmm. i agree I, I totally agree and really? that's like i always say that um if you if you think about it like in an archaeology perspective the reason why like we've dug in the same place like 30,000 times and haven't found anything and then all of a sudden we dig there once more and we find this amazing artifact that sheds light on like lost or hidden knowledge is because we had to be in that vibrational um, yeah. frequency in order to find that artifact and that's kind of sums up like what we're all about these days. Oh <laughs> Bree's like, oh wow, oh, you're, you're exploding. So, I'm exploding. <laughs> I have to I have to bring up the freaking pyramids. Here I go with the pyramids again. Um, so one of the things I learned, one of the many things I learned when I was involved in planning the global pyramid conferences and you know finding out research from all these incredible people all over the world, um, is that there are um, pyramids that exist on Earth and other are just exactly what you said that are in a different vibrational frequency and i guess this this is really um this can be said for all all the layers of dimensions of earth earth is not just a a big rock floating in space like there are like everything's layered on top like there is no space there is no um distance right like everything is all even though well in the physical oh my god <laughs> I'm like, I'm tired today, so it's even harder to explain things. Um, so I hope I'm doing an okay job. But I, I have heard that <laughs> I have heard that there are pyramids that will be discovered as people continue to raise their vibration mm -hmm. and have a higher vibrational consciousness. And then as the planet continues to raise in vibration, there will be um, lots of things that are going to be, we're going to be shifting into versions of Earth that have a lot more things than than we have mm -hmm. had and um one of the pyramids is knowledge that's i love that it's like more and more of the ancient knowledge is kind of it's coming up you know yeah yeah like you using using this stuff for the continued evolution and expansion of humanity and and i would want to take this back um speak you're here alicia so we have to talk a little bit about language i think little need to talk a little bit about language you mentioned your language. language translating hieroglyphs and I had been messaging you yesterday about that because a friend of mine who I want to bring on the show, um, she said that uh, some hieroglyphs cannot be translated if there's ill intention behind it. Mm -hmm. And I was asking Alicia about that and she's like, well, you know, it's a, what did you say? It's a, vi it's a vibrational... Well, Ramsey's, Ramsey's popped in and because uh, he's not like, I don't have access to like my dudes all the time. Like they, I mean, they're on their own schedules. So like if I need them, they can choose to pop in or not. But it was really funny because he, he was there and he was like, kind of like, 
like this. But then I was like, so what's the deal? And he said something like, there's, there's two different frequencies or there's different frequencies of hieroglyphics. So he said, for example, um, translating something on, uh, let's see, like, like a tomb's not really a great, or maybe like a pot. So translating something on like on a cooking pot right? Um, or just a everyday story scroll. That is like regular translation of what we would consider like into English, you know, like um, Egyptologists do every day to get the story. But mm -hmm. like on a, on a, he used my coal pot as an example, um, where I haven't translated it all yet, because when I was little, it was super easy. And I just knew and now it's not as easy as it, <laughs> as it used to be, but I can still do it. He said like, so the coal pot, even though like it talks about like beauty and, you know, um, being beautiful forever type of thing, it's like the beauty of the soul. And so it's really an, um, a vibrational, interdimensional um, way that those hieroglyphics are represented. It's not just like what you see is what you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I explained yeah. that properly. That's exactly what you were saying, Brie. But yeah, so like there's different. But isn't that the like, way like, with everything, even that way with everything in life, where you can access it at, at very different levels of conscious understanding at a basic level, yeah. TV, at a much higher level, because depending on where you're at is what you resonate with. So yeah, that, is, that for me is, is absolutely, makes perfect sense. I've never doubted anything else. Same thing with light language. Yeah. Like you yeah. can listen to the light language once and then listen to it again and get something totally different totally different mm -hmm. because every time yeah. we're in that now moment like you said that michael said right <laughs> and and my vibration in this now is not the same vibration as in this now we right. have <laughs> because exactly. we've, had this, we've had this conversation and even if it's like in a blink of an eye for us humans it's the space of eternity in in a non-time oriented uh, dimension but every time we have an insight a, a recognition a soul um a soul meeting then we're in a different vibration so we can access the information that is presented to us differently that that is exactly. my entire life the whole time i've never i've never thought it to be anything other than that um, it's interesting you, you said that clear and disappear yeah yeah because i'm thinking of even like take take a scenario in life um uh, i recently had a friend whose mother passed away and um and I really, you know, because I, I grew up with this, this, this lady who passed away. I've known her since I was very young. And so I really was going back in my life, you know, and thinking about all these memories and having all that stuff come up, in addition to it being New Year's, which is a whole nother, you know, looking at everything in the past. And, um, and it's interesting you said that about, like, it, it's, it can be applied to everything in life because you're absolutely right. It depends on our on our perspective are you looking from from the higher perspective or are you looking from you know the the being on the floor mm -hmm. and having that you know this is all i can see because i'm on the floor and i have a limited view or how are you climbing up and and seeing everything for how it is so in terms of of death and in terms of things um happening in life right and we say oh well this is so horrible and i'm the victim and wh why did this happen to me and it's like there's a bigger picture going on so when people pass away you know there's a bigger picture going on if a baby comes into this world and the baby dies after being alive for three days the people will will if they're on the limited perspective this is you know I'm being, I'm the victim and how could this happen? And, you know, God is punishing me or something, but on a higher perspective, there's so many lessons that that baby came in to give. And that baby knew that baby incarnated in order to provide those lessons for people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and even on a soul like level for the parents, they knew yeah, exactly. that, that was, knew. you know, that was arranged, but yeah. Yeah, but in our, you know, in our 3D world, it's, it's always, you know, I don't know, it's hard to see past the linear part of it when you're in, when your emotions take over. Mm -hmm. but so I wanted, to, like, I wanted to show you guys this card. This is what, because I've, I've been talking about this a lot lately about perspective is everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're on this like bridge mm -hmm. and you look up, all you're going to see is circles, right? Mm -hmm. 
But if you step back, then you can see that there's so much more that these are actually pillars. Mm -hmm. And if you actually put yourself in the middle, you can connect the pillars with your love and light, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about perspective of where you are in that moment as to mm -hmm. what you see. I mean, the, the so. classic thing I hear all the time is, oh, that person is my greatest enemy. And then I always say, well, you could always flip the coin over and see that person is your greatest teacher. Exactly. And it doesn't, exactly. Make that, it doesn't make that experience any easier because we're still human and that's why we've incarnated as humans to experience the full spectrum of human emotion, which can be very ugly indeed, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. that person with your agreement at spirit level has come in to present you with the opportunity for that mastery where you can either see them as your vilest enemy or your greatest teacher. And I think that's one of the massive lessons of mastery, of our mastery journey as human beings, when we see everybody as a teacher and a guide rather mm -hmm. than out to get well us. Yeah, we're all students and we're all teachers. <laughs> at the same know? time. And, and, and being Absolutely. at the same time and being yeah. in that energy of n like neutrality and like openness. And I want to learn, yet I know that I, my experiences, I can now take and teach others who mm -hmm. are um, who are open to hearing it, who are asking to hear it. That's another thing is shoving information down people's throats when they don't, when they right, don't want to. You don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah. I know what I you know need it. to know. Yes. And you and know. It, I was thinking, Brie, of like what you and I had been talking about too, like, or like taking a crappy situation and then um, giving it a different perspective of flipping it upside down. So previously, those uh, who have experienced a crappy situation or were in that crappy situation, they listen to all these other teachers or people who are, are explaining more about the situation, but those teachers are not presenting it in a way that has any light shown on it whatsoever, yes. but flip it a different way yes. and you can heal so many just by allowing them, them allowing themselves to let that in to start the healing process. Yes, mm -hmm. it's about disempowerment or empowerment. And I, I love that you said that because this has been massively happening on, especially in the spiritual communities and the new age communities where there are these teachers saying, okay, well, I got insight that this happened and that this is going on and, oh, the government is doing this and, oh, you need to watch out for this and, oh, you need to be afraid of this. And it's like, okay, you can take that information with empowerment or disempowerment, right? Mm -hmm. And if they are spewing it and it makes you feel disempowered, you don't have to listen to it. And in mm -hmm. fact, that is their reality. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can either take their reality and say, this is the hat I would like to wear, this right. horrifying <laughs> nightmare of a reality that you're telling me about where everybody's out to kill me. I should be paranoid with everything. Right. That I, do. I can't go to take a shower without feeling like the sky is going to crumble on me. That's the hat I want to wear. Now, I wore that hat for a long time. So, well, not a long time. <laughs> a while. I wore we're not, it we're and not I don't know wear it for a while good. and learn from it. I didn't like the hat. Okay. I took the hat off. I'm like, Okay, so now I can see the stuff on a higher level and say, all right, well, you know, maybe, maybe this is actually just good knowledge to, you know, see their reality, see what they're experiencing and, and send it, send it light, send it a whole bunch of light because that's what we need to be doing is hearing people out and, and really um, opening our hearts and having compassion for it, you know. Because that's how the healing happens on earth. When we start to hear, even if they created a horrendous experience for themselves to learn from, um, that doesn't mean that we have, to, we have to say that that's our reality. I'll give you an example, very interesting example. Sorry, my cat, you know, potty time. Um, interesting example is my parents were uh, looking up stuff about um, earthquakes on earth. It looks like we have four minutes left almost. Yeah. Okay. So my parents were looking up earthquakes and they said, Oh my God, there was a giant earthquake in New Zealand. You have a friend in New Zealand, don't you? Oh my God, is your friend okay? And I was like, Oh dang, I should reach out and find out. So I, you know, Hey, Hey, how are you okay? There was a big earthquake. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And my friends, my, I, sorry, my parents were looking at a map. It showed the earthquake. It showed the everything. I truly believe, now I cannot confirm, but I intuitively believe that there was different time, different realities that happened there. Yep. 
That's exactly different realities. Yes, my parents were tuning into this fear-based, the world is ending pretty well. I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> it's like earthquakes everywhere, volcanoes everywhere, tornadoes, and oh my God, the sky's on fire. And then my friend's just like, la 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 la, I'm in New Zealand and I'm having a good time. And her reality is beautiful and heavenly and magnificent for the most part. Okay, it was still on earth, but you know, she's having a good time. So it's just so interesting. And this go again goes back to the Mandela effect that we mentioned very briefly in the, in the last time I was on here. So it's fascinating. This stuff is fascinating. We're all on different planets. Yeah. Right. We're all on different planets. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, so part, I, of, I, part of what we hear. Yes, Alicia. I was gonna say I have like I have so much light language that I'm like dizzy. So I don't know if uh, now would be a good time. <laughs> Please. Please. It's always a good time. We've got two minutes, 30 seconds, and then we will be rudely cut off by Mr. Zoom because we don't pay for this. So I would love for us to go out on a blast of light language. And if we get cut off before the end, just know that the intention is we'll carry it out there regardless. So we'll just, we'll, we'll finish it regardless. Exactly. So it'll we'll all be wrapped up in one beautiful exactly. ball. We'll just say goodbye before, in case we don't, and we'll see everybody again next week. And thank you so much for sharing this journey yes. with us. We love you and honor you. And if we can be of any assistance and support, knowing that we're all here to support each other, then you just reach out to us. And thank you, Alicia, for coming on. Thank you, Bree, for coming on and inviting Alicia. Thank you, darling Laurie, for being always present. Thank you, Yoda and our spirits and guides. Arkanat and Arkanat and Arkanat, and I love you so dearly. And, <laughs> and the cat. And thank you, darling. We'll see you again soon. All yours. Namaste. Bushu to Sokaya Loa and a tuk bujuno to the Akali Asian at the Goa Badia. To Sohana Hualo Hokushu do on it yet a kia ayato or buju. Does in at the qua, cooler yahan who quiet the o o nuju. Budu the golo a jo ma atia, io o ya 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 o Mushu ti ate ka la hua na ti kua ha ti ti si ata. Bu u ti ate aya o o ya 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 o ya 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 o ya o no. Wa ya 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 o o la ya o li ya o li ya 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 o ya mu piya shi shi ata. Ni si ate ti ate ti ata ta 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 who you see a poor genatia, cool oot, yata tata yata tata 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 tata